What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm eating lunch, something really simple. So it's not really a mukbang, more like a talking video where I eat my lunch and you can join me while I eat my lunch because you guys know that's what I do basically now. I do videos while I eat lunch and just basically talk to you guys. So today I'm having a turkey pot pie. Hello to pot pies. If you never made your pot pie from scratch, then you know what you're missing. But today I didn't make one from scratch. I just got one out of the freezer department. But anyway, as you see the title, before, before hold on, before I get into anything else, you guys go check out the coldest water bottle, the link in the description, okay? If you want to get 10% off of your order, be sure to put in Avis C, 10% off. The bottle is very affordable. It's, my husband bragged on it something to me yesterday. I said, now that's what you should have said in the video. You guys know it's like, like 98 degrees or whatever, and he has the coldest water bottle in blue. He does air conditioning or whatever, so he leaves his bottle in the truck. Windows up, okay? And you know dying temperatures, that's inside. You can die inside of a car. Like literally, you cannot leave a cup in there for 30 minutes with the windows up without coming back in nothing but water, right? He left it in there for a couple of hours because he goes on lunch at 12, he goes to work at 7 o'clock. Get you? Okay. And they have drinks on the job, like water or whatever, but his bottle, he had his own personal thing in the truck. He forgot it in the truck. And so he went to the truck during lunchtime. He said, babe, it still was icy cold. I said, I told you. So anyway, we go somewhere out in public, we take our bottle with us. So, but anyway, go to my link, okay, in the description box to get 10% off. Use Avis C to get 10% off of your order. And I swear to you, you will not regret buying that bottle. Okay? You put juice in it. You don't have to put water in it. You put juice in it. I keep buying juice in it. Put your juice in it and just enjoy it throughout the day. Like literally, I see drink ice. And I feel like sometimes I'm wrong. I feel like it's making it colder. Maybe just in my head. But yeah. But I'm going to say grace. I'm going to eat my little turkey pot pie. We're going to get into this video and we're going to talk about what we need to talk about. Okay. Father God, bless this food to nourish me in my body and hold this name, I pray. Amen. So, I like to smell stuff. Okay, before I talk about that, you guys, what, um, your pot pie, what's your favorite part? Is it a whole thing? My favorite part of pot pie is the crust. And another thing, do you eat your pot pie, your crust first? Or are you one of the people that like, Mix your crust with your pot pie. Use my pepper and salt. And accent. If you want to make it easy as chicken pot pie, turkey pot pie, whatever, easily just Get your rotisserie chicken. Get your can a, a, a can of cream of um chicken. Add some frozen vegetables to it or fresh. Season it with some salt, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, accent, a little paprika, a little cayenne. If you want a little spice to it, whatever you like. I feel like I need to put this in the microwave a little bit more. I feel like my filling ain't thick enough. But anyway, I'm going to do that. And pause the video. Got to pause it anyway, right? Duty call. Okay, I'm back. And I'm going to put it in the microwave for three minutes. And yeah, it's actually like bubbling, like it's sizzling. And it's actually then burnt the hole through my plate. But anyway, my favorite part of pot pie is the crust. So yeah. But that's basically the end of the, oh yeah, back to how you make it. Eat the easy, simple way. And then you just, so you just get your, um, a little cooking dish. Put you uh, what you call it? A, 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 a pie crust. What would you call it? Um, piece of crust. Get a piece of crust to cook. It could be flaky, or get you a pie. I actually like pie crust, and or they have the roll out pie crust as well. Lay that on your pan. Put all your filling on the inside that you like. You know, more vegetables. What kind of vegetables? Like you don't have to put potatoes and carrots. You know, but if you want to put whatever vegetables you like, if you want to put broccoli in it. Chop it up. Put some broccoli in it. And then put the um, pie crust on top, put it in the oven, and bake it. That's it. So, yeah, and add your little butter on that crust. So, yeah, I'm going to eat my crust first. I always eat the top of my crust first, and then I start from the inside out um, to the bottom. 
and I added my accent to it. It's so flaky. And I have like a, a light headache today. I don't know what that's about, but I plead the blood of Jesus over that because the devil will not interfere with my day to day. No, ma'am. No, sir. Mm mm. That was good. So, today we're talking about, because you know, we're living into this, this society where all this stuff is going on with the COVID-19 thing. And it's completely horrible. So, um, look at that beautiful humming. What am I look like? Y'all can see it. The hummingbirds always come to the glass. But anyway, you guys, um, kids are starting to go back to school. Well, not starting yet, but they're in this month, August, starting to go back to school. Whether your child's in college, middle school, elementary, whatever, it's school time, right? So, are you letting your child go back to school during this crisis? Now, I know some of you guys have, probably have no choice in the matter because you're probably like, you know, a single parent. A uh, secret mom or whatever, a single dad, and not just you can't say, oh, because your dad and mom not there. No, your mother or your father could be in the service or they work out of town, be a truck driver, and the wife is always home with the kids, so she has no choice. So it does not automatically mean I'm pointing out because you're a single mom and your dad's not in your life. No, nothing like that. But I do call that single parenting when the parent is not always active in the house, whether they're working or, or actually not in the house. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, I want to point that out. Always oh, digging up as it cools. Awesome. So um, yeah, are you guys letting your kids go back to school? I'm be time to comment. <laughs> but me personally, no. My kids are being homeschooled. I'm not letting them go back until I don't know. But yes, we did the paperwork and everything so they can be homeschooled. They'll be doing, uh, they'll have laptops where the school will provide for them at home. Um, they do have rules and stipulations on those laptops as well. Each child will get a laptop. They have rules and stipulations on that. Um, as far as they cannot download any games beyond any type of other devices besides work. Which my kids will, should and would not because they have their own cell phones for that. And they also have a computer and a laptop. My laptop that they always are on anyway. So they have a computer at home and also a laptop. Plus they have their phones. So that's not even an issue. But just letting you know some of the stipulations um, that comes with being at home. Having, being at home school. Being home school, sorry. And um, when the school are giving them, lending them uh, materials. Also, um, someone said the school will be providing lunch for them as well. A breakfast and lunch the same way they would if they was at school. Because technically they still are in school. They're just at home. And they will be video, video what, live camming the kids while they're at home. So the kids will be in front of the computer so the parents can help them or anything like that. Um... They'll be able to see each other while they're there in the classroom. The kids should be, I think the kids and the kids be able to see the children at home or whatever. So they can even call them if they raise their hand on the computer like this. And they're okay, destiny or whatever the case it may be. Um, so yeah, so when they have lunch, they're off camera. They go have lunch whatever with their family or whatever. They're going to have recess. They have recess, that type of thing. Um, I think it's also because I'm not putting, I'm not going to put my children through anything, especially when they're talking about, oh, I'm not talking about when there actually are kids catching the COVID-19. The corona. That's just saying. The corona. You know? And, um, yeah. And how can you social distance a distance school? How can you do that? You can. Especially at my children's school. They, um, they wear uniforms or whatever. But middle school, high school, middle school, and elementary are all one big giant school. You feel me? So how can you social distance that? How can you constantly sanitize that? And knowing children, children are kind of nasty anyway, always picking in their nose or doing whatever, touching things. How can you, and so the kids constantly have to wear gloves, wash their hands, use the bathroom, constantly. It's just so much for a child to remember. I can see like older people should know, but elementary kids, it's like a constant, they have, they can't remember to, 
And their shoes are untied. Tie your shoe. They know their shoes untied to the net, but they still walk around with it. They know their nose is running, but they better sniff it up and then go blow their nose. So how do you get them to actually have the knowledge to know that the germs can kill you? You have to constantly wash your hands, wear gloves, do this, do that, do this, do that. How can you do that? And then another thing, when you have a class setting, at least about 15 kids, how can you social distance that? How can, how can you break down and separate kids when your school is already what it is? How can you social distance that? How can you do that? You know what I'm saying? So like, no, I'm not taking no chances with my kids. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm just not doing that. That was good, right? I'm not doing that. I only have four children. They are precious to me. And I'm not trying to lose one. You know? I'm not doing it over something that's, that's just dumb. You know? Some people can't do that. I don't know. I know you have to go back to work and blah, 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 and rah, 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 but I still have to work. My husband has to work. Now, like I was saying, now, now, listen, if the table was to turn and my mom or my grandmother wasn't present in my life, that the way that they are, then, you know what? That, that actually probably won't be true too because I wouldn't be working. I'll be at home with them. I would be a stay-at-home wife again. Because once I had my first child, Destiny, I was a stay-at-home mom. When I got pregnant with Destiny, and I found out I was pregnant, and I quit my job, then, I probably when I was like maybe four or five months, because I remember, I don't know, whenever your boobs start to hurt, I don't know, everybody's boobs different. But when I was pregnant with Destiny, my boobs were starting to hurt. It was tender or whatnot. I quit. I'm not gonna do all this stuff. There, I was a waitress then at this restaurant, and also a cook too. I was multitasking, and um, yeah. And I was what? I was 20 then. 21. Sorry, no, I was 20 when I got pregnant. Hold on, shit. I was 21 when I got pregnant. Excuse me. I was 21 when I first got pregnant, and I had Destiny at 22 on my birthday, and I had Vaughn 11 months later. So I had two kids at the age of 22. So, um, yeah, I really believe I wouldn't be working still. I would be a stay at home mom and yeah, and wife and be at home with my kids and take care of the house and take care of the kids. And I just got to step up mentally, physically, emotionally, all this stuff, but you know, because you know, I'm very short patient and and tempered at times, but they don't. That doesn't reflect to my kids because I would never lash out at them like that. If anything, they'll get cursed out. Who gives a f? They'll get cursed out. Who don't? Cause their kids. I actually, when y'all was trying to be nasty a couple years ago and called DCF on me, cause you did not like me, and they came to my house, and then I strained the ass out, and after, and then they fucking ass left, and the case was closed, like always. Period. And I even show up in my videos of when I do cuss at my kids. I say, ma'am, there's nothing wrong with cussing your, cussing your kids out. Okay? The, the, the guy sit there and told me. I said, yes, I curse them out. And they go to the school before they come to you. So they ask your kids. My kids like, no, my mom don't hit me. They don't do this. And this. Because I, I li li literally, I don't even beat my kids. My kids will get threatened all fucking day before they even get a whooping. You know, they would get threatened all fucking day before they ever even get a weapon. Like, literally. I can't remember the last time I even... You know what? I think the last time I spanked Harmony was like... That's the, that's Harmony. You know, but she's like seven or whatever. Six. Whatever old she is. So many kids can't keep me from track. But, but that's when she bust my flat screen TV. She got mad at her brother and threw my camcorder, my camcorder, at the TV and busted. <laughs> that's when she got a spanking. And even then, there was like, spanking is not um something, the word he used, whatever, as long as you spank them on their bottom. 
you can't like beat them on their arms or their backs or their legs and shit like that. To the, that's he was like that's when it becomes child abuse or whatever the case that may be. But um, but if you're beating them on their bottom, it's fine. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay. So like, but anyway, that's a little bit off topic. But we did fall into that category a little bit. But yeah, like. No, oh, I was talking about my short patient. So, yeah. But that goes with that. And, um, Ron would just be the sole provider like he was when I was a stay-at-home mom because he, he didn't want me to work. He didn't want me to work now. But now, he got used to it. He doesn't, he doesn't care. And I was like, I want you to tell me when you want me to quit my job. And he was like, you quit when you want to quit. I'm like, no, I want you to tell me when to quit my job. So, when you're tired of me working or whatever, I would quit my job. You know, my job is just extra, extra ink to be, to be quite honest. I'm God knows to be quite honest. It's just like my job is like money where we can go extra spending, put like that extra spending. So I can like spend stuff on like random shit where I probably shouldn't spend on like shopping all the time or <laughs> trips when I could be saving and put in my savings account. Every, every now and then, yes, I throw a couple hundred dollars in my savings account um, to help it grow, you know, whatever, like that. And, yeah, and to get, like, random stuff, like, I don't know. I, we, to be honest, I do a lot of unnecessary spending. But now, since I have upgraded, uh, doing this video is going wrong, I'll start to talk, start talking about my business, how upgraded I'm buying host more anyway. But yes, let's get back to the topic. So yeah, um, so are you letting your kids go to school? And if you cannot, why? I want I want to know your your. I mean, you don't have to tell your personal business if you don't want to. But why? Why or will you would not let your child be homeschooled? Well, how do you feel about me? My children doing homeschool. I mean, I don't mind you, you know whatever. But my opinion is, I don't want my children to get sick. Rome just had to get tested two days ago for the COVID. At his job, they it made all the guys get off early at work to go get tested for the COVID nineteen. Um, because somebody or whatever supposed to have had it or whatever, and they had to get off. And Ron got his results back today, and he's negative. I said, well, if you negative, I know I'm negative because I ain't got no kind of nothing going on anyway. But if you negative, I'm negative, and that's how we feel. Like if we go to like the doctor office and we get tested for STDs. Or whatever, and if you really got honest, trust your spouse or whatever, anything like that, you got honest, trust your spouse. And if they get tested and they pop, they, they negative, then you know you're negative. You ain't got nothing to worry about if you got a good man and what good girl. You feel me? But yeah, I love that crust. So that's the end of the video. I just don't. Feel that the kids should be going to school yet, period. Especially with all this going on, I don't feel the kids should be going to school right now, period. Um, I know they're falling behind in education because some, pe some people, some parents don't actually help their kids with their education during this time of the summer or, or, or before they got out of school, before summer was even had started. They were out of school because of this. They're not helping them. Now, I'm gonna raise my hand. I'm one of them parents at times that's like kind of laid back and sometimes forget and that the kids, you know, need to be reading today or writing today, uh, doing their sight words today, things like that. I'm one of the parents that tend to forget sometimes. But I don't care what you say about me. I don't care how you feel about me. I don't care what you write about me. I'm an honest person and I give props where props do. And I'm just gonna, I'm just straightforward, blunt, honest, no skeleton in the closet type of bitch. I am thankful for my mother, Sharon, and I'm thankful for my grandmother as well, because where I slack at sometimes, you know, they definitely are there to, my, they are there to help me, to fall back on, period. Now, I am going to kind of say that when it comes to their, the materialistic and the emotional what other stuff when it comes to my kids, when it comes to material things, as far as clothing, shoes, or they wants and they needs, and they, they talk to me, play with me, hang out with me, I am that person, that parent. 
Now, when it comes to the schooling portion and the education part, that's Mama Sharon. That's her expertise because she used to be a, a child educator or whatever. She knows the ins and outs, how she had, she had the patience for kids. She had worked with kids from ESE to whatever the case it may be that has slow learning disabilities, from act to being super active. So yes, she know how to work with these type of kids, and especially my kids are hyper. So she know how to help them more than I can because she know I don't have the patience for that. I get really upset when I'm trying to help you and you're you're not catching on how I think you should be having them. I know everybody learns different. I had to learn a disability a little bit when I was in elementary school. You know, all that. But, you know, everybody learns different. Everyone is different. So, I thank God for her being in my life because, like I say, if she was not there, I just would have to step up. Good morning. What are you doing? Greg. Yeah, I just would have had to step up more if, if she was not in my life, period. And which you wouldn't have no choice anyway. But hey, a lot of people won't admit that. A lot of people think they feel like they make them make them feel like they're a bad parent because they can't do everything a parent's supposed to do. No, baby. You're not Wonder Woman. You may try to be, but you have to know, you know, yourself. And I'm <laughs> I know myself. But like if worse come the worst, you don't have a choice, so you have to do what you got to do. But because they are there, it's easier for me, easier for my children, and that's just what it is. Feel how you want to feel. I don't care. Y'all talk about me anyway, so there's something else for you to talk about. Well, actually, you're in the anyway. But yeah, it's okay. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not know everything. It's okay that you can't provide everything. It's okay not to know everything. It's okay for whatever it oh, is. It's just okay. You know, we all have some disabilities in some type of different type of way. I'm not talking about physically or whatever, but we all fall short somewhere. There's no one perfect. He without seeing cast the first stone. Can't nobody watch a video can cast of the first stone. Because everybody at one point in time, not talking about me right now, but everybody has fallen short in some area of their life. Whether your lights got cut, cut off or your water got cut off or your car got repoed or you can't pay this bill. You had to ask somebody to pay that bill. Or you had to go take out a loan because you're Whatever the case it may be, everybody falls short in something. So nobody has room to talk about nobody. Only reason why nobody can't be talking about you is because you hide your shit. How long people like me? We don't give a fuck. We be honest. So, that's it. <laughs> I guess this was just an update on everything I feel. But yes, this is definitely about the kids. And I guess everything else I will put in the title. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> I love you guys. Follow me on my social medias. Don't forget to go check out the Coda's Water Bottle link in the description. ABC for 10% off. And I swear to you, you would not regret this bottle. Love you guys. See you next time.